Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Live from Harlem in New York, it's me, it's Alex, it's the Ramble, and we go until midnight tonight from the East Coast to the United States. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's a whole week later, and Albert went and got the same shirt he wore last week, and I got the same shirt I wore last week, so that we, we match last week. Yeah, very yeah. nice. Yeah. Nice. Thanks for having me on again. Nice of you to be here on the lovely uh, whatever. Oh, it's still the ramble. Yeah, we're, this is on the ramble. So, anyway, uh, Albert, as you may or may not know, uh, used to be my producer. Correct. At, at Sirius XM. And, I, you know, it was funny in life to wind up. I, I've had tons of producers. Okay, over illustrious career let me go they're all here. stuck get, with I, you that long I huh gotta, you had, had tons of them i gotta get a tissue because my nose is mm. Mm. that's very professional yeah well i did it below the camera level oh okay good mm. um nice. he was my producer and i can say this after a long long illustrious career that it was great at the end of my career to have the best producer i ever had and you really were thank you, you very much really were Appreciate and, it. and i get some good producers Think if we had been given some more time after that, because we were just starting to hit the stride of 10, 10 years. We just started to hit the stride. We really did. I mean, it would have been gangbusters after that. I think it was a funny three hours. Yes. It, it, it did not belong on the political talk station. Not funny. Fun. Fun, fun. three hours. Oh, fun, yeah. Well, you know, yeah. when I first went to Sirius XM, they said, uh, listen, uh, would you do us a favor? And I said, what? They said, would you go on our, our political channel, our left channel, because you are left politically, right? And I said, yeah. And they said, uh, we could sure use somebody there because uh, all we have is this uh, woman, uh, what's her name, uh, Lynn Samuels. And uh, we're going to put her on full time. And uh, then we would have a good, solid channel. So I said, okay. I said, but don't expect me to do politics all the time. You know, I'll do politics, but I don't expect me to do it all the time. Well, by the end of our time there, they were going, not enough politics, not enough politics, you know. And I'm going, you know, I asked you to put me on one other channel. It was like an entertainment channel. I said, that's where I really belong, but you wouldn't do it, you know. So in the end, we paid, we suffered for it. We'd probably still be there to this day if we went on that entertainment channel. You know. Is there an entertainment channel? Well, Didn't yeah, I forget. Was? I forget what it was called, but it wasn't. It wasn't serious stuff, you know. Mm. So, oh but, well. Yeah, well, we've had a nice ten years or close well, to ten. Well, years. Yeah, we had a good ten years. Yeah, uh, nine years, I think it was nine. Nine. Uh, it approached ten. It was almost ten. Is it approaching ten? Anyway, mm -hmm. so that was it. You know. Either Oscar way, you know what? It does. It doesn't matter because, and here's the great thing. Everybody now is listening and watching this stuff and not going to satellite like they used to. It's all on the Internet now. Everybody's yeah. either got YouTube or, or, or podcasting and gets it shoved right into their phone and done. So yeah. it's not a satellite anymore. But this so is but, but I mean, great. I, I don't like this as much, though. I, I well, feel that with radio... There was more of an immediacy. You know, you pretty well knew that when I was talking to you from New York City, it was happening right now. Well, you have the ability to do that. Well, I do that every night. Yes. But uh, m most podcasts aren't live. Well, that's that's the way paradigms change. People people yeah, don't I, necessarily I, I want to live. I the change in paradigms. I mean, people were saying to me, they're thinking of taking AM radio out of cars. And I'm going... What? <laughs> I, they, and I said, you know, everything, times change and the method of distribution changes. I said, but, you know, it is sad that they, the, one of the reasons they're taking, by the way, out of, out of car radios, is for some reason AM radio uses up some kind of frequency or whatever that electric cars need to use. Mm-hmm. 
And so if you have an AM radio in a electric car, there's some kind of interference that is created on the AM band. Because as you and I know, there is more interference on the AM band. Because it's right. not protected. Could have been, which could have been cleared up years ago if they'd made it a digital signal, which it still is not. Yeah, right, exactly. That's the problem. And by the way, it's 2023, and you can't figure out how to get rid of that little that little problem between the, the, you know, the electric car and the AM radio? Well, What's apparently, going on? apparently not. But anyway, so the thing is getting rid of AM radio, and I'm going, probably should have gone years ago, actually, to be honest with you. Yeah, you know? yeah. Fact, when was the last time you listened to AM ra or any radio? Hey, listen, I you know I never listened to radio uh, when I was in my car. I used to put on music. Well, yeah, but you'd listen to music stations, wouldn't you? No. Why you should I listen to music not? stations to hear songs and then punctuated by commercials? Yeah, yeah, okay. You're when right. I can put in a disc in my CD player at the time, well, or. You're or, talking about at the time when CDs were around, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or, or right now, I mean, um, um, you can go to any number of things where you get the, like Amazon Music or whatever and have it in your car, and you don't have to get, have commercials, and you can pick what you want to hear. You can program yourself. Yeah, that's, that's why we're surprised at making a big stink about AM radio. By the way, FM radio, who listens to that anymore either? With all the commercials and all the nonsense, well, on you there. know, I remember the most, and the biggest, and the biggest scam is uh, is is the traffic that's still on, which is not up to date because the traffic people got it ten minutes ago, and that accident is cleared up, or there's a new accident. You want to see what the traffic is? Put on Waze, put on Google uh, Maps. That's where you'll find the traffic. Yeah, you can get automatic, immediate stuff that way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So how's it happening? You know, so I mean, it really, it, 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 it the, the fact is that radio itself has become unimportant, you know, and um, what was I going to say? There's something I wanted to say about uh, just about uh, uh, listening. To, oh, yeah. When you and I, the last show that I ever did uh, in recent time, well, I did this thing over at the religious station, over at the... Uh, um, I can't even remember the name of the station here in town. I just did it a couple of weeks ago. Oh, the AM station. The AM yeah. station, yeah. Um, Is that a religious station? Y well, it, it's, no, they own a religious, they own WMCA. Mm -hmm. um, but this station was a station that took over the offices of WOR, where I did a show quite a few years ago, uh, and in that same exact studio. Hmm. You know, but anyway, uh, so I, I did WR. Then what I was going to say is that I then did a show with you on, I believe it was New Year's Eve, was it? Or Christmas Eve? Oh, yeah. New right. Year's Eve. And, and that was on WOR, right? On the new studio. Yeah. Newer and, studios. Yeah. And you were my producer. Right. And uh, we go to co commercial break. And I said, uh, I'm thinking of going to the bathroom. How long do we have? And you said seven minutes. Have a diarrhea. No, but seven <laughs> minutes. You know, I figured I could go out, have breakfast, dinner, uh, come back, and we'd be through the break finally. You know? I mean, how do you expect people to stick through that? You know? Because it's an old audience, and they're used to being treated like that. That's how they No, expect. they're not, because in the early days, they only had to put up with eight minutes worth of commercials an hour. Yeah, but it's only the old audience that's in fact, listening now. In fact, now. come to think of it, there were more less commercials in a break on the old AM radio than there are now on the new AM radio. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, what, what, really? I mean, seven-minute break? Are you Charge you? less, put on more commercials. That's how they make the money. <laughs> Boy. They have no choice. Charge less, you should play less commercials and charge more. Uh, but they're not willing to pay more. The advertisers aren't willing to pay more Jeez. because it's not worth it. Because it's AM radio. Have you listened to AM radio? I have. I can I tell you this? I can't remember the last time I listened to AM radio. You know, it's it's uh, six seven years ago. And I can't tell you the last time I listened to FM with radio. You. Huh? Working with you was the last time I listened to, to AM radio. 
that the time we were on WOR. That's right. And you weren't really listening to it. You were doing it. See, no, but I listened. I listened the day or two before, so I knew I knew what the situation was. Right? Oh, okay. Yeah. Stations. Uh, oh, yeah. You did the prep, right? I, I. By the way, really funny. Uh, Albert saw this thing I did for Shecky. Very uh, nicely done. Uh, and you said that's the first time in your life you've done prep, huh? <laughs> and you didn't realize that that's the way I always prep my shows. Oh, come on. No, really, I'm serious. <laughs> you know, I used to say, people say, do you prep your shows? And I prep all day long. You know, I, I observe things. I absorb them. I think about what I might say about them. You know, this is all a process that goes on in my mind, been going on for the history of me and radio. I don't know. I didn't hear once during the Shecky thing. You never once said, hey, come on now. We need some callers. I got to have some callers. No, no, wait a minute. Now, it's a different situation. You know, yeah, uh, but uh, but the point was, you said to me, well, that's the first time you ever prepped. And actually, the way I prepped that was the same way I prepped that everything in my life. Uh, at night, I went to lay, put my head down on the pillow, and for about 20 minutes, I kept thinking what I was going to say and rehearsing it over and over and over again in my mind. And then maybe saying, well, that would be this would be good if I move that there. And I'm doing this all in my mind. Well, whatever process it was, yeah. it worked. So well. I got then got up there, and I'm the only person that did it without any. I didn't have any notes. Mm. I didn't need any notes. I knew what I was going to say. Did a nice job. And the reason I had to also figure that out was they told me I only had three and a half minutes. Well, that's tough. Yeah. Well, you know, some uh, summarized, you know, forty five years of a relationship with a friend in. Uh, in three and a half minutes is kind of impossible. Actually, it was three minutes, and then I got a note from somebody, uh, from this woman, Randy, who said to me, I have good news for you. You got three minutes and 30 seconds. And I'm going. I'm and then not, you go to commercial. I'm not, well, you, the, the thing was that the people who did this were all Letterman people, mm -hmm. okay? So they were producing another TV show in their mind. You know, so when they said you got three and a half minutes, it's because they were sitting there, you know, with a clock and just like you would do with the Letterman show had to be in, uh, you know, 59 minutes or 58 minutes. Mm -hmm. So everything had to be timed. This segment is so much. This segment is so much. And so they kind of produced it that way. And then when I got there, they said, ah, go on for as long as you want to. Well, I'd already figured out what I was going to say and had it timed out to about three and a half minutes. So, you know, it didn't matter. Uh, but, uh, but no, when you say that, that was the first time I've ever seen you do prep, you know, that's the way I did prep all my life, even when we were at Sirius XM. Well, I, I think that Lynn Samuels would disagree with that. Of that course old. she would, because she, had, she did prep. She had volumes of papers she would bring out when she was doing her show. And I, did, she, I did it all from up here, you know? Well, you know what my theory was, if I don't know what's gonna happen next, then the audience isn't gonna know, and it's all gonna be interesting for all of us to find out. That's right. You know what? Larry, King, Larry King had some, somewhat of the same mindset as well. Well, he and I have talked one day mm -hmm. uh, about this. We, after he did my show, we went out and grabbed a little bite to eat, and we sat down and we compared notes. And I was amazed how similar we were in our process. Mm -hmm. He said, I never, he says, I never have any, a list of any questions I'm going to ask. I just hold a conversation and let it go where it's going to go. And I figured that that's the way I do it, you know. And you never read the book beforehand. Never read the book beforehand. That's my other rule. But what about, but movies you would see before you talked about Well, them. I didn't like that, you know. Huh? I didn't like that because let's say I see a movie, all right, and I go, boy, I got this guy on Monday and this picture sucks. Mm. What am I supposed to do Monday? Go on and say, hey, I saw the movie. Boy, is it terrific. No. Mm. So I would rather that I hadn't seen the movie because I'm now sitting with this guy and I've got to tell him, wasn't that good? And, and you, can't, you can't do that. You, and, and politically, you, you can't do that because the PR that. person will then say, well, look what he did. He's not getting another guest again. Yeah, I would say to them something like, if I had to comment on it, I would say, nice job. 
you know, nice job. But huh. then I would interview them, you know, if it was like any one of a number of different people, I would, have, you know. I did, it, my only problem was I should have done more research on some people that I was interviewing. Because I remember that I did um, Robert Wise, movie director. Director, yeah. And I interviewed him, and he had just done, I think he had done, among other things, Star Trek The Motion sure. Picture, which is a terrible film. Uh, but I talked to him about that, and I talked to him about West Side Story he directed. Mm -hmm. About West right. Side Story, and a whole bunch of things. He walked out, and he left, and all of a sudden I realized he was the editor on Citizen Kane. Oh, right, yeah. And I didn't ask him a single question about Citizen Kane. That's when I could be a terrible interviewer. Well, you know, that was also before the time of, uh, of Wikipedia, when you can just scan through something on there and say, oh, yeah, yeah, he did yeah, that. Yeah, he, I did could, that. he did that. You, yeah. You'd really have to dig to find But I things. even knew that fact, you know, that he edited uh, Citizen Kane. Well, then you didn't do your prep. Because you should have written yeah, it down. That's right. Edited that's, right. that's right. Well, well I'm, 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 I'm admitting to my mistake. Oh, that's good. That's good. Okay. Always good. It was a big mistake on my part. A question I should have asked. It's mm -hmm. my. If I could do any interview again, it would be Robert Wise. So I go back. Go back and ask him. And probably spend most of the hour about Citizen Kane and not about other stuff. Certainly not about Star Trek: The Motion Picture. Oh, what a wonderful picture that was. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, uh, but. Um, yeah, uh, but uh, most of the time though, I was pretty good. I I didn't know the people that I was interviewing, and if I didn't, if I didn't like, if they write a book, I don't. I didn't read the book. And number one, it's because I don't read books much, you know. And secondly, mm -hmm. because uh, I didn't want to know more about the subject than the audience would. I would like to say to the guy, so tell me about your book, okay? Uh, and he tells me about it, and then the audience who hasn't read the book you know, is on the same level with me. However, right. if I've read the book, now I'm interviewing this guy on an entirely different level that bypasses the audience completely. Not only that, but from knowing you personally, I can tell people that you are a notorious spoiler. You like to give away tidbits that you think aren't that important, but really are. And you've spoiled some things for me, so I'm glad well, you, you mean don't like watch in Citizen Kane, the sled is, uh, is Rosebud? Well, I don't know that it, that it really is, because the inside meaning of Rosebud is something completely Well, the, that, was, that was because they said that Mankiewicz, who was the screenwriter, uh, so got to hate, he was banned from San Simeon, and yeah. he so hated Hearst that he wanted to get even with him. And his uh, affectionate term for Marion Davies' vagina was Rosebud. And that's so what, and supposedly that's what drove Hearst crazy about that movie, not the rest of it, you know. That and the way he treated the woman in the picture, which wasn't supposed to be Marion Davies. That was actually, uh, 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 Orson Welles said that was modeled after a guy who bought his girlfriend a opera house in Chicago so that she could sing in it, and she was terrible. And that's yeah. who that was modeled after. Okay. And it was another another millionaire that did this? Uh, yeah, yeah. Had nothing to do with Hearst. Right, and, and then her, Orson Welles said Marion Davies, who was his lover all those years, it wasn't modeled after Marion Davies, because Marion Davies was one of the most talented people in Hollywood. Oh, okay. In fact, somebody had a great quote. I can't remember, can't remember who said this, but uh, it was uh, uh, Marion Davies was notorious for giving her money away to people who needed it. You know, why would that be not famous for it and not notorious? Uh, it, it's not a notorious uh, thing. Uh, no, it, it, well, think, okay, she was famous for it. All right. For it. So picky. He's such a taskmaster. Anyway, um, and uh, he said, uh, Marion Davies makes up for the rest of Hollywood. Wow. That was their, that was what he said about her. And, and she was well loved. She was very loved. And, and uh, it's, it's a shame what happened to her. Uh, when Hearst died, 
she was so distressed at him being ill and looked like he was going to die that they gave her some drugs that put her out. And oh, while she was out, he died. And when she woke up in the room that she was in at her home, anything that had to do with Hearst had completely disappeared. Really? They went in there and just looted the place for anything that had anything to do with Hearst. And she was, was with that, him. She was with him for 35 years. Was that uh, was that part of the the movie where no. she was she was out when he died? No. That no. wasn't part of the movie. No, that wasn't part she, of the but movie. But she was but in the movie the the woman was kind of drinking and drugging at the end, right? Yeah. Yeah. But but uh, I don't know if Marion Davies became an alcoholic or not. I'm trying to remember. Uh, but but they literally, I mean, and this is the woman who, by the way, saved the Hearst Empire. You know, you know that story. The Marion yeah. Davies, this supposed chippy, this this uh, uh, sugar mama or whatever you want to call her. Uh, when Hearst lost all his money during the Depression, literally, and they were going to have to close down the Hearst properties, she gave him a million dollars cash to save the company because she owned almost all the property in Columbus Circle in New York. So Good she note. sold it off, gave him a million dollars, and on top of that she went to her jewel box, got out all this jewelry which was worth maybe as much as another million and gave that to him. And it saved the Hearst Corporation and saved Hearst. And he never forgot that. He almost married her. Flew everybody up to, or railroaded everybody up to San Simeon. They were going to have a wedding, and then at the last minute, his ex-wife wouldn't give him the divorce because she wanted Cosmopolitan Magazine as part of the process. And he so loved Cosmopolitan Magazine, he said, I can't do that. So she wouldn't divorce him. So they had to send everybody back in trains back to L.A. and call off the marriage which really made Marion very despondent because they'd been together for, you know, 35 years. And she so wanted to be his wife, not for any other reason. She didn't need the money. She was very wealthy on her own. I mean, she saved his empire, you know. But And I thought succession was complicated. Wow. Y yeah, yeah. But, you know, I mean, most people don't know who we're talking about when we mention Marion Davies. But if anybody can go watch uh, some of her films, especially silent films, wonderful. Just a wonderful comedian. Uh, and uh, uh, you, would, you would really like her pictures, you know. Um, but, I'm not a big silent film But fan. she's forgotten. You know, a lot of people get forgotten. I mean, the biggest star in the world, Clara Bow. Nobody remembers mm -hmm. Clara Bow. But I'll tell you, if I ever showed you some films of hers, you'd say, that's the sexiest woman I've ever seen on screen. It was, I'm going to uh, I'm have to Google her, her when oh, we get done. Oh, oh, amazing. If you go on to YouTube, there are actually, look up Clara Bow, and there's a, doc, there's a documentary that they did about, you Hefner produced about Clara Bow documentary. And it is just, you'll be crying by the end of it. I mean, and you'll fall, you'll fall in love with her just watching her. How long is it? It the documentary I think is an hour. Yeah, yeah, and it's on YouTube. You know, I suggest everybody watch it because these are people that shouldn't be forgotten. They were great, and she was the biggest star in the world. Well, that's the good thing about the time we live in is that there are records. There's visual records, audio records of people yeah. like that, and also that everybody that, everybody's fame winds up lasting fifteen seconds. Yeah. That's that's the thing, but you can see the fifteen seconds now, whereas in the eighteen hundreds you got nothing. Well, you know they say that so and so is really sexy. Beyonce is sexy, or so and so is the sexiest woman ever been in movies. The sexiest woman, I guarantee you. You go watch this Clarabo documentary, you'll agree with me. The sexiest woman in movies ever was Clarabo. Does she show a bit of ankle? Hmm? Oh yeah, she 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 was known as the It Girl. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for more than 15 minutes, too. For, for more than 50, but she was washed up mm -hmm. at 25. Well, she's no Mickey Rooney. She's no Mickey Rooney, exactly. If Mickey Rooney were there, he would have saved her career. Man, he was the biggest star forever, and he'll tell you that. He was a one time the biggest star in the world. Well, that'll yeah, show sure. what that'll get you. you know? Yeah. 
Yeah, I remember doing, oh, God, I, I'll tell you, you know the story about me and Mickey Rooney. And him showing I know up many in, stories about Mickey. My story one, he's showing up in my studio one day, and me just looking at him in the control room and saying, I hope my producer doesn't bring him in, hoping she doesn't bring him in. And she brought him in. And, of course, I get the whole thing. If Judy Garland had only called me just before, blah, 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 she'd still be alive today, you know. Didn't didn't I bring him in one time? Didn't I book him one time? Did you? Did I you? think I did. Oh God! Did I we? know I booked him on, on several shows that I produced. I, didn't I say don't? You probably did, but yeah. he's Rudy. Come on! No, just I, I don't I don't want to go over here much. But the two nights before, I had seen Mickey Rooney on with Joan Rivers when she had that talk show. Mm -hmm. Remember that uh, Carson got mad at her for over at Fox. Yeah, yeah, and he. Mickey Rooney just took over the show. And I felt so sorry for Joan Rivers. I didn't think I'd ever feel sorry for Joan Rivers, but I felt sorry for her because he completely hijacked the show. That's what he does. He, yeah. a, a few shows that, he, that he's been on that I yeah. booked him on, he, he takes over the whole the, thing. The other, doesn't you know, the, the other one that was good at that? Steve Allen would hijack a show. I he, don't think I've he, ever booked him. He'd come Steve in Allen. and tell you how, how high the volume should be on the pots, you know. Uh, on, on the mics and so on. Yeah, anyway, uh, I and then all of a sudden, here my producer Christy, who I love dearly, but she, I said, I hope she doesn't make that mistake. And next thing I know, who's sitting in front of me? Mickey Rooney. And what am I getting? Well, if Judy Garland were there, and I could have saved Julie Garland's life. And oh, shut up, Mickey, please. Shut didn't, up. Didn't you tell her you don't want him in there? I couldn't tell her. I never told her that. But he was, he was in another sh at an, on another show. This is the WABC in L.A. Or so KBC what? in L.A. I would have come in. I'd said, hey, Mickey Rooney's next door. Do you, do you want me to bring him in? No, she just brought him in. Said, no. She thought well, she was I, doing a big deal. She got, she got Mickey Rooney. Yeah. You know, uh, I, that's why I say you're the best producer I ever had. Anyway, hey, listen, we've run over. But that's good. That's good. I could talk to you for uh, for years, you know. And I hope you do talk to me for years. I hope so. I hope I'm still talking with you in years from, to come. And uh, hey, listen, good having you here. It's and good to be. Let's here. do this again in a couple of weeks, okay? Whenever you like, ladies and gentlemen. Stick where, stay where you are. Albert Reynoso, ladies and gentlemen. Yay! Bye. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And here we are, folks. It's uh, it's uh, Wednesday, and uh, we have uh, three shows to do this week, as usual. And uh, we're we're back. Uh, I don't. <laughs> I'm looking at the people who are trying to get on tonight, and one of them, uh, I think, is um, I think is somebody that I uh, that's okay even though it doesn't look okay. But let me let these people in, and then what I can do is I can make sure that uh, all of them are legit, okay? Uh, where do I go here? Admit all, there we go, okay. I'm, I'm remembering again how to do this. Okay, let's see who, okay, all right, all right. I, I, I was wondering who possible ass meat was. Oh, wait a minute, are you guys there? Wait a minute. Are you there? Hello? Hello? Yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. I want to make sure you were there. And uh, let me see here. Let me add Brian Neary here. Here comes Brian. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I hope he pops in here. Anyway, uh, so who was possible last meet? It was you, right, uh, Kevin? Kevin? Yeah, it happened. <laughs> you forgot to take it off when you did it the other day, right? Yeah. 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 So anyway. Well, I want to see the ass meat. Hurry up. <laughs> mm. But it only said possible. So that's that's okay. Exactly. How you all doing, guys? Oh hey. hey look who we, look who we got here tonight. Boddicker. Good hey. to see you, Scott. Hey, I'm awake. I'm awake. It's past nine o'clock. It's past <laughs> Well, let's see out there where you are. It's what time right now? Well, it's ten o'clock actually. Yes, it's ten o'clock. Wait a minute. Yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah. Hold on a second. Well, it's yeah, it's eleven o'clock here, so it's ten o'clock there. 
Yeah. Okay. So what, what's the temperature? I, I forget that Texas is Central Time, isn't it? Yes. Yes. As yes. is Alabama, which concerns me. Yeah. <laughs> How's we, that? How's that? I don't know. I don't know. How's Alabama? At least way out east. It's Central Time. Yeah. Well, I know that. I mean, but I, I just wonder. Uh, oh, there it is. Uh, is that your? That's the temperature. A front came through, dumped a shitload of rain on us. Yes, it was great. Temperature dropped. Yeah. Well, thank God for that, huh? Yeah. Anyway, yeah, it's been uh, it's just been it's just been normal here, you know. Uh, today, Marjorie and I did something we haven't done in a long time, and every time I do it. Every time I do it, I swear to myself I'll never do it again. Sex? Yeah, you don't need to tell us those Thanks. details. <laughs> you tell yourself I, I don't expect that kind of talk like that from you, Scott, a good Catholic boy. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, sorry, sorry. sorry. Sorry, Father. We went to the movies today. Oh. Uh -huh. You know, I, I've forgotten how absolutely terrible movie theaters are. You know, I'm so used to lying on my bed and watching, you know, a movie that I wanted to see that maybe within a month winds up streaming anyway. Uh, and uh, so I we went to the movies today. And um, I've got to tell you, uh, it was... We went to see Asteroid City, the Wes Anderson film. Oh, yeah, how was it? Mm, if I were to rate it among all of Wes Anderson's works, uh, it's somewhere below Bottle Rocket. Uh, it's not, it's not, I, w I was so looking forward to it, so was Marjorie, and it's not that good. It's beautifully done. I mean, graphically, it's just, you sit there just going, Wow. And there's some visual gags which are quite funny. I mean, there's one sign I remember in it that says, uh, do not enter, and then in parentheses, or exit. <laughs> you know, things like that. But I mean, it just, it wasn't, it didn't live up to what I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a lot better than it was. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, but it, 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 even bad Wes Anderson is good Wes Anderson. You know, it's good anybody else. So, um, I wish I made a movie this bad. Okay, you know, then it would be a pretty good film by most standards. But boy, I'm telling you, the trouble was the movie theater. To begin with, it's not the comfy chair theater. This was the uncomfy chair theater. Okay, this was an AMC theater which I guess they haven't gotten the message that most theaters are putting in these, you know, these, these comfy chairs, right? You, you have them in Texas, right, uh, Charlie? You have them right where you are, out where you are, uh, Scott? Yes. Or do you go to the movies anymore? I don't go. I don't oh, go. Okay. You don't go either. Who, how many here have been to a movie theater in the last little while? Wow. Five years. What's happened to the movie? Oh, I've been. I, I thought you hadn't been. Okay, no, I've been to movie theater in the last couple yeah. of months. Did it have like the comfy chairs? Yeah. Yeah. See, th this one didn't have the comfy chairs. It had like the old chairs that are low, low and uh, go back just a little bit. Um, oh, and man, the problem was is that I decided I. Uh, where we were sitting, this guy was in front of me and he was blocking my view. So it was not a full theater, so I decided to go to another seat in the theater. And I went to get up out of this chair and I could barely do it because the guy was in front of me, so I wasn't gonna grab the seat in front of me. And I really had no way to get out of there. I mean, it, they are just terrible, terrible seats. Mm. Just not a very pleasant experience, all right? And so then Marjorie spends, uh, let's see here, uh, $27 on tickets, all right? Mm -hmm. I spend $20 on snacks, because the price on snacks has gone up, okay? Jeez. And then I, uh, I paid for the uh, cab both ways, the car both ways. So everything total, 
maybe comes to $75 to see an hour and a half movie. Mm. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not, it's no reason to go to a theater anymore. Just wait, you know. Eventually it will come to a th home near you, come to a couch near you. Um, but it was terrible. It was just... Uh, it was, we saw John Wick, John Wick 4, but I wanted to see that in the theater, you know. Why did you so want to see... What, what was it about seeing it in the theater that you couldn't get the experience at home? Well, the action, and to see it right away, we we're looking forward to it, so... You didn't want to wait. Well, there are some films, you know, I mean, like, we went to see um, Avatar in 3D, okay? Uh, and... That's a movie that's three hours long, and we left after two hours. It was just not worth the time and effort it took to get to the movie theater. And within a couple of weeks, it was already available on uh, on, on uh, streaming. So, you know, what's that all about? You know, so um, uh, I I just found I find the movie theaters to be not a comp not not the kind of outing you'd like it to be anymore. You know, they don't care about anything but getting your money. They don't care how good the projection is. They don't care how good the uh, popcorn is popped or anything like that. They just, once they got you in there, we got your money, you know. And and believe me, when you got paid $27, another 20 I say, that's $47, uh, then another both, almost $25 going back and forth. Yeah, yeah, about $65, $70 we spent today just to go see the movie. You know, that wasn't for snacks afterwards, which we didn't get. We came straight home. Yes, um, uh, Jeff? There's no theater that that sells movies anymore. What do you mean that sells all, movies? They're all closed. I mean, I mean, there are no theaters that have mov that are showing movies. Really? Because we, we, there's still, I don't think any theater I know of in Manhattan is closed. Yeah. I, I, think, I think I know why. Didn't the didn't the Connecticut uh, state government say that uh, portable toilets are are no longer allowed? No. <laughs> I, I didn't know that. Yeah, I'm kidding. So I I, I don't know. I'm trying to make a wait joke. Minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's 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 diagram that joke for a moment. No. <laughs> and, and figure out just so we know for future reference why it didn't work. And the only uh, part of this—I meant to say public. The only said, part of the diagram I've got here, which I'm <laughs> looking at right now, is Alan told the joke. <laughs> that's it. And that's it. That's Bingo! It. I hit it right. <laughs> no Venn that diagram for that jokes. one. So but, I, I will. I will try something a little better that's not a joke, but it's funny. So I went to Petco. A friend of mine's dog is having a a, a Her, birthday party. I hope I didn't say. Wait, I think wait I a minute. Wait a minute. A dog's having a birthday party. Party. So you go to pet Petco. Petco, right? Why? What, for for streamers and party hats? What? I don't know. No, no. Just to get it a gift. It's a friend of mine. So I go there, and there's a dog water purification system for seventy five bucks. And so I talked to the clerk and I said, so what does this do? It purifies the dog's water so it doesn't have to drink all the chemicals and everything. And I'm like, I said to the, the clerk, I said, the dog just, you know, ate a pile of poop a little while ago. I mean, <laughs> now you're worried about purified water? Yeah, you, I, <laughs> and, and she just looked at me. She was stunned that I even said. Uh, oh, it, it, Tony's right. He does have to wash it down. <laughs> Just do what I do, Alex. Like, you, well, you, you should put Perrier. You should get a bottle of Perrier. <laughs> Purified water. I'm like, for a dog. I'm like, oh, my God. I don't know why you would go to Petco to get a gift for a dog. You know, you can just grab an old tennis ball and give it to the dog. He'll be yeah, happy for weeks. He'll have this big but, sloppy tennis ball that he drops yeah. at people's feet. And the gifts are like 40 bucks for something yeah. they're going to rip apart in about 10 minutes. Yeah. I got it a Kong. It's this oh, big... Oh, Kong's company. very popular. I buy the Kong toys, too, yeah. I'm sure you do. That's what keeps your teeth straight, Tony. Um, it, <laughs> I it's really. a really hard rubber... It's toy. popular toys, the Kongs, yeah. Yeah, the Kongs are good. Thank you, Tony. So that's what I got. It was a Kong. It, it missed out on the water purification system. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? 
Okay. Right. So Next how was how it. was the birthday party for the dog? Did you go over there and sing yeah, happy? Yeah, birthday? I went over. It was you know they were having mainly adult stuff, and the dog was he ate eating too many cupcakes and it barfed. You know that type of thing. You tried. So. Well, you, you were feeding him chocolate. That's no, 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 cupcake, vanilla cupcakes. Oh, vanilla cupcakes. Okay, yeah. well, yeah. yeah. But I mean, what, like you, what, what do you do? Sing happy birthday and. No, 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 no. It, it just it was a let, party. Let me now. Let me ask you a very important a question here, since all eyes are on you tonight because of bad jokes and the and the and the like. Um, what does that have to do with this? Movie? Wasn't a joke. <laughs> how how old was the dog? Four. Hmm. What is Four. the what is the uh, the the cocker spaniel? It's cute. Really? You know, it's funny. It's Phil's birthday, I think, tomorrow, and it's the dog's birthday. Oh, we should send him Kongs. <laughs> Get him on Amazon. It's Phil's birthday think... tomorrow? Is it I tomorrow? Think I think it's, it's this weekend, it's Tony. Oh, this, oh, uh, I think he already had a birthday. Trump? No, it's it's on the 24th. It's this Saturday, Phil. Oh, this Saturday? Oh, okay. Yeah, he shares the same birth date as Mike Allen, who we don't know what happened to. Really? Doesn't anybody know what happened to Mike Allen? Man, Mike, yeah. I, would, I would say he's dead. I'm betting on dead. I think he's in I was, huh? I, I don't or know. I was, I was one in, or the other. I was in Sacramento visiting a friend of mine, I don't know, it was five weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And so Mike I Mike Allen, wait a minute, hold on a second. In case people don't know, because not everybody listens to the intersection. Of course, right. not every everybody listens to this show either. Uh but uh Mike Allen is on is a guy who was called from the very beginning on the intersection. And uh, that his name is Mike Allen, and he kept sounding worse and worse. Okay, mm -hmm. let's just say that he wouldn't give yeah, up. A couple, couple of weeks before he ended up not showing up anymore, he he was having a lot of breathing problems. Said he had double pneumonia. Mm -hmm. Who knows? I don't know. But uh, how how would you know if he were dead or alive though? That's yeah. That's. Want me to send him a message? Cause you just, he, yeah, he, he used you to just don't wake up alive. I he hasn't know. answered any dead. of my messages. Oh, yeah. Okay, you should ask him. Didn't he, did he call the show before uh, you guys did video every day? Yes. No. Listen, he contacted me. Yeah. By the way, his oh. birthday is June 12th. His birthday, birthday is yeah. June 12th. Phil claims it's the same birthday. Is it? Mm. Phil claims a lot of stuff that lies. Well, yeah. yeah. Phil is not known for being. He, he, put, he, takes a page from, he takes a page from Donald Trump. Okay. <laughs> you know, if Phil's birthday is the twenty fourth, yeah. So. Okay, good. At least I got that right. Thank you, Charlie. Yeah. I, I'm Facebook friends with these people, so I have all the. Oh. Uh, yeah. When I, yeah, I'll tell you what. Um, what uh, disgusts me about Phil? <laughs> okay. Anybody want to know? Yes. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> Whenever he's out with people, he takes a picture of them and sends it to me. You did that to me too. As if I, I care. You know? I think he tries to that's get your worse, attention. That's worse than the people who on their Facebook page take a picture of their dinner and put it I'm on their waiting, Facebook I'm page. waiting for him to be drinking out of the dog purification <laughs> system and take a picture of that. That would be a good thing. Yeah. But I mean, I, 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 this weekend he was with uh, Steve Fox, who does our voice. Yeah, that's when he showed me something they went out to yeah, eat. Yeah, he sends me a picture of himself with Steve Fox having dinner. I'm going. I can't be there. I'm not being included. Why are you sending me a right. picture? Oh, yeah. Look what you're you know? missing. And then you he know, says to me, oh, Steve <laughs> wants to know this or wants to know that. And I'm, I'm, I'm trying to watch a movie or something. I'm getting these messages because, as you know, I get them on my watch, you know. And I just, you know, I was, almost wasn't going to answer, and then I did. But. Has anybody found out any news on the... Uh Whatever it is, the submersible. The that, wait, wait, yeah. wait a minute. Yeah. How do we go from from Phil movies to the dogs. submersible? Yeah. What to Phil? Alan's all over the place. Man. Kevin, did you want to say something? Nope. Oh, okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get over that. What? My brother told me about that. It would they. Oh, well, well, Two hundred fifty thousand to see the Titanic. And what? Like, what? Yeah. I don't. I don't understand. What? What's, what's the news item? I haven't heard about it. Oh, tell me. <laughs> you didn't hear about that? Oh, Go ahead, Tony. 
Tony, I December. wake up in the morning, and sometimes I find out what's happening in the world. It's been going on oh, since uh, Sunday. Yeah. It's... I only found out about it today. He was telling me about it. I didn't even hear about it. Well, luckily, this. you got to find out about it before they're dead. I think they're gone, right? They're dead, didn't they? No, not they, yet. They don't know. They don't know. They could have had an implosion. Uh, it could be freezing to death. It also could be that pe that piece of thing they went down with is a piece of crap. Yeah. I mean, it's never been certified, been certified by the class. Why would you fire the safety officer? <laughs> what? The guy that was, yeah, that was supposed to, he told him that he can't go down 4,000 feet or whatever they were going. They, well, they yeah. were, they 4, were. 4,000 meters and the thing was only capable of 1,400 meters or something. And like they were that. never yeah. certified to do it. You know, and I, I saw a guy, I was watching, oh, I know what I was watching. Uh, uh, this guy, Reese, uh, I'm trying to remember his first name. Who worked on The Simpsons? I guess he made a lot of you know fuck you money yeah, and yeah. decided to use it on going oh, on that man. particular That's... thing, the Titan. And he said he went down. He and his wife, because his wife was daring him to go down with her, yeah. uh, but he mistakenly got it wrong. She was just going to dare him to go down on her. But oh. thank you, folks. I'll be here all water. week. Anyway, so so they went down this thing, and he said he slept on the way down. He said, and then when they got down there, they hit the bottom, okay, and they couldn't find the Titanic. Oh, just watch the and fucking And they kept movie. floating around with, their, with the light on looking for the Titanic, and they oh. can't find it anywhere. Now, look, you're charging people $250,000 a piece, right, to go down on this thing, and... You can't find the Titanic? Well, you you know, there's no GPS. light down there. Apparently, you can't see your hand in front of your face. Yeah, but it they, doesn't even have GPS on. They should have uh, some, yeah, they should have some, right? You'd well, think the on The next one will, Kevin. There will yeah, be right. no next one. You can bet your life there will be no next one. This yeah. thing's like 30,000 feet deep or something like that. No, it's, uh, it's uh, 12,500. 12,500. 12, well, that's Same a, difference to uh, me. You really? You get a bit of chance of yeah. Must overestimate the size of your penis too. We all do. <laughs> We're Jewish. We all would do. Yeah. Anyway, so um, um, uh, but he said that he, you know, they finally they found it and they had to get up uh, back up before sunset, and uh, mm -hmm. so they only got to see it for like a minute and a half, and then they <laughs> went right back up to the top. Wow. I'm not paying my two hundred and fifty thousand right. dollars. I'm sorry. I paid you to show me the Titanic, and all you, you can show me are crabs or something. You know. You gotta show the you movie. Where's Leonardo? Where's Leonardo? Huh? What'd you say? <laughs> Leonardo. What? What did you? Wait. What? What did you say, uh, Kevin? I said, "Where's Leonardo?" Leonardo. <laughs> oh yeah. Captain. Yeah. The movie. So I mean, you know, I mean, it. it, it uh, and secondly, there was something that just bothered me about taking tourists down to see it, what is essentially a graveyard. Have a yeah. little respect for the dead. All you know? it is is, uh, is Bezos in reverse. And they're going down instead of up. Yeah. Do, you, do you know one of these people actually went up on Bezos' yeah. rocket? Yeah. 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 His check bounced uh, on, the, on the dive, so they just cut the cable maybe. I don't know. No. Is this there, there is no cable. Once they're down there, they go down on their own. You know how they get back up? How do they get communications? You know, how you, there are no communications. You can text for about I don't know twelve hundred feet or something, and then yeah, they that's text. It. Do you know how they it's get? Really you, sophisticated. You, are you how sophisticated this thing is? Guess how they get to go back up? How it floats to the top? They dump weights. That's right. They dump you all the they weights. They use a the, game controller to move it around. Well, I, you know something? That. I don't, that doesn't bother me. I told Marjorie, uh, I'd be bothered by that if I didn't know the game controllers are pretty accurate. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, but, they're, but, they're probably but, but, more accurate than some other device you might use. Um, yeah, I don't know. Whatever. And are you having Phil on tomorrow night? He'll have two things to it's talk just, about. No, tomorrow night, kind of, tomorrow night, I have... It's kind of funny sitting down there, we're going down, and you'd see, look over the guy, and he's got a Nintendo in his hand. Tomorrow night, I have a guest on who uh, I've never had as a guest on, and his oh. name is Don Giller. Yeah. And he is the guy, if you go online and you look at YouTube and you look at some 
some for well actually for a couple of years before Letterman started doing it himself, mm. all the stuff about Letterman, all the Letterman shows and everything he was putting up, and he was wow. a great archivist. And so I I said to him, you know, I he, I think he's a really funny guy, and I said to him, come on, come talk with me. You know, he was very hesitant to do it. Well, I, I'm not interesting. Blah, blah, blah. I said. Don't underestimate yourself. And I it's a really fun twenty five minutes. You'll have to hear it tomorrow night. It's really good. Yeah. All right. It's really good. Otherwise Phil would be talking about Adam Schiff getting censored today. Did he get censored for what? Yep. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yep. He, he got told On, time's right up. Right along party lines. Imagine that. Yeah, time's up. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And then a, it, was a, uh, it was the Hunter dirt. Biden pled guilty to uh not paying taxes or something. That was last yeah. week. Come on. Oh, okay, well, whatever. You know, and he hasn't pled guilty yet. He's no. going to. He did today. He did today? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I, that that's another thing. I don't we got to get another antenna for your TV that tunes in today, Alex. So oh, you don't okay. hear last week's. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, so, so uh, um, uh, you know, I... So hey, Gil is going to be on with me tomorrow. On with me tomorrow. And um, one of the things I, that happened today, um, uh, this woman that worked with Shecky and is uh, the uh, administrator of his estate, mm -hmm. uh, asked me a couple of months ago when she was starting to go through everything, is there anything here you'd like? And I thought about it. And there are a lot of things you know, Shecky had, like, he collected uh, cartoon art. I mean, oil paintings of Donald Duck and Probably stuff. Probably worth like that. a lot of money. Well, I I didn't I didn't know how much it was worth and not worth. You know, I just knew that it wasn't the kind of thing I'd put up on my wall, and I didn't want to take anything else anything that somebody else could give it a better use out of. Okay, so I um, I told her I, I don't know at this time. And then after I thought about it for a while, I said, I called and wrote her, and I said, you know what I would like to lay my hands on if you haven't given it to anybody yet, and you don't need to give it to anybody. I, I'd like uh, Shecky's computer and his external hard drives because he's got a lot of films, a lot of TV shows, a lot of stuff he's been collecting over the years. And I said, um, you know, I, would, I just want him to be able to, you know, archive them. And she said, sure, they're yours, you know. And today she called, wrote, and said, I'm coming to the city. Let me bring the uh, computer and let me bring the, uh, the drives. There are tons of, of these, you know, hard drives, uh, these uh, external hard drives. Uh, and the machine. Now, the machine, I don't have the password for. I was going to say, where's the password? Yeah, I was wondering. He, I know that I had it once for a couple of minutes because Shecky... Um, gave it to me while I was working on his machine one day, okay? But I can't remember it to save my life. Okay. Can't you plug the external hard drives into your Apple computer and, vi and view them? Well, I could take the exter the, uh, the externals, I, no problem. They don't need a password, okay? Uh, but the machine does need a password. Now, I don't know what I can do about that. You know? Cool. The only thing I can do is maybe pull the hard drive and then hook it into one of my computers and I can probably read the hard drive and then take everything that's on that hard drive. He probably didn't keep any films really on the hard drive on the machine. That's what I'm thinking. But if he did, I could then offload them onto something else and so I've got that hard drive as well. Um, but if anybody... And, and write me if you have it. My ad address is alex at gabnet.net. Uh, if anybody has a way that you can take a um, computer that's uh, for a PC, um, so it's, uh, you know, Microsoft, uh, and, and how I can somehow get into that machine without knowing the password, please give me the formula. I know there's got to be a way to do it because there are people that do it all the time. Yes, Alan. Uh, yeah, they sell discs. Amazon probably has them for like fifteen, twenty dollars, and you, they're a boot disc, and it doesn't boot it into Microsoft. It boot it 
it boots it into Unix, and then you can see all the passwords. That's what I've been told. I, I've never used it, so I don't know. Oh, really? Uh, you would think that it wouldn't be that simple, but Microsoft is not that smart, so. Well, uh, I'm, I'm sure there's some way of doing it, because people lose their passwords and they can't get oh, yeah. onto their machine. There's got to be a way to do it. Uh, I think you got a good chance. Hmm? What's that? I, th I think you got to find somebody who's going to do it for you. Oh, then I need, to find, I need to find a 14-year-old yeah, who's good yeah, with that's computers. Right. And they'll do it in 10 seconds. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Hmm. I don't know. One of my granddaughters. So anyway, um, um, uh, uh, elsewhere in the news, uh, you've got Donald Trump, who I think is turning out to be, and I, I'm saying this to all you Republicans out there who are listening, I'm not trying to change your mind about being a Republican. I'm just no. trying to say, I think maybe this isn't the guy for you. Because this guy is so stupid, he goes on television and hangs himself. I know. You know? Um, did you see the interview with Brett Baer, any of you? Yeah. Uh, sure. He yeah. was talking. Brett Baer nailed him. This is on Fox. Just nailed him. He listed a whole bunch of people who were in his administration who he has now said are morons, <laughs> idiots, fools, whatever. He named about 20 of them. And he said, how come you hired all of them? if they're fools and they're idiots and they're incompetent. He really didn't have an answer for that one. You know, I mean, it was it, it's amazing. Somebody said, if I were the prosecution in this case, I'd want to go out and find the best person I could find to convict Donald Trump. And you know who that would be? Himself. Donald Trump. Yeah, he talks too much. You know, I mean, come on, you don't talk about it. You know, when I was going through that whole case in court, did you hear me talk about the actual case as it was going on and what people were saying and not saying and so on? So No. You don't want to say anything that's going to come back to bite you in the he ass. He's more and more. It's like, hmm? just let him go because it's just like, he, he's going to cop a play. I'm telling you. He doesn't have a chance, I don't think. You don't think? I think I think when they, when they show what they have on him, how is he going to get out? This is a federal case. I think he's his goose is cooked. I think he's going to end up with a hung jury the first time around. And I hear the case is coming August 14th. Is that correct? Well, the, 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 what happens is in that part of the country, they like to expedite That's great. Um, That's good. Uh, the cases. Um, and so she just simply said they say you have to do it within a certain amount of time. And she looked at the last date in that in that window and said that's the date now they can always go in and call for a you know try to hold it back and say oh he's got he's well actually it's two days before the debate for the republicans and he wasn't planning on debating anyway because he doesn't want to have to stand next to chris christie and have christie nail him you know um i mean this is the guy that prepped him for debating He's what? Got so many other charges against him. He'd probably have other dates he's got to meet in yeah. other courts. Yeah. There's, there's a really good interview with Chris Christie, and uh, he talks about this billion dollar deal that that uh, Kushner got. Kushner and got that uh, two billion, two billion, yeah, two billion with the Saudis. And talking about how families, you know, the, there's no way that any family member should be hired in in the White House. And, you know, the, the Trump just blew everything out from the, the moral things you're not supposed to do uh, with the family thing. And that's results of something like this. It's a you know, $2 billion dollar think, deal. And it's all because at least Biden, they said Biden was the parent, right? Biden, Joe Biden was the parent. And they they, they think maybe there was something there. But but with, with uh, the Trumps, they were direct employees. It wasn't like his father was the was the president. These actually, the Trumps were actually employees of the government. Where Biden still, you know, there's still a lot of questions with what happened to Hunter Biden. But at least it wasn't Hunter Biden wasn't an employee. Well, Hunter of, Biden of was government. never part of the administration. Exactly, and that's he what he was saying. Advisor, that's what he was saying. Yeah. Chris said there should 
There should never ever be a family member able to well, hold an office in the government. Well, there the, uh, the, traditionally uh, there have been uh, relatives who have held positions in the government. It's usually the first ladies, and they're yeah. usually in charge of the garden. You know, yeah. I mean, they're not in charge of anything important. Uh, like the vice president. Yeah, yeah. But he was sending Kushner to, you know, places like Saudi Arabia and so on to kind of be the de facto secretary of state. Yeah. And you can't do that. That's not right. Yeah. You know. So, I mean. Nepotism uh, at its best. Huh? Nepotism at its best. Oh, yeah. No question about it being nepotism. But, uh, you know, it, it's amazing. It's just amazing to me that, that this guy is just really stupid. He goes on the air and he says stuff that's going to come back to strangle him in court. I mean, the thing I love best is that, well, I, I, I you know, uh, all those papers were mixed in with my underpants, you know, my jockey shorts and you know, when you what? read when you read the indictment, it's just like you know the the stuff that he didn't take care of. The way that that those documents were not taken care of is a crime in itself. Well, what he said to Brett Baer, and this was the line that just it got to me. He said, "I just didn't have time to separate all those boxes. Tough shit to go through them." And he they said, "And he says, you room. know, I'm a very busy man. Busy, yeah. Yeah, well, busy doing of- busy doing what?" Putting on weddings. To wear in a prison. Hmm? I mean, the stuff was falling over. They were storing it in showers. They were, you know, the stuff was falling over in rooms and just spread out on the floor. Listen, it was ridiculous. I understand <laughs> how when you get all these boxes from the White House and you've just left the White House and they ship all the boxes to you, <laughs> that, you know, maybe one of those boxes, I mean, has a couple of classified documents in them. And what you do when you suddenly find those is you call up the National Archives and you say, whoops, I think I have something I shouldn't have. You know, and would you come pick them up? Bull crap, because he, when did he lose the election? November. He, he, was, he was given his notice in November, and he left in January. He had plenty of time to check his boxes. Well, I mean, I mean, also, you, you yeah, exactly. It's well, like you get your notice. Here's your six month notice. Okay, look, you're gonna be you're gonna be laid off in January. If I'm moving yeah. from downtown <laughs> get your to shit together. if I'm moving from downtown to uptown, I might have to throw everything in some boxes, and then when I get here, I separate them, right? But come on, he was the president of the United States. People were packing for him. Yeah, he started saying that those were. All those boxes were like news articles and magazine clippings. That's what he started saying in this other interview I saw the other day. It's like, oh my God. Love letter. Hmm? Like he reads. Yeah, yes, Jeff. Did, didn't you hear that he said, the reason I couldn't find anything is because my golf clubs were somehow underneath one of my boxes. He said that? Can you imagine this? This guy, I he thinks people believe everything he says like it's the truth. Yeah, but in the indictment, he actually admits that he was showing people certain documents. And he was showing maps. Oh, don't get too close. I can't show you this, but here it is. You know, it, it says right there in the indictment. Yeah. No, I mean, it, I mean it, it's step odd. in shit and eat it, too. It looks like he's starting to lose ground. Uh, in his desire to be the nominee because the latest poll he's down about seven points and they say that may start eroding even more because some people are going you know i want to pres I, I like trump i want him to be president but it's too much it's too much drama you know maybe we just need somebody who isn't going to expend all his time creating drama DeSantis is losing like crazy. No, he's not. He hasn't changed. He hasn't changed it. In spite of the fact that Trump. DeSantis. Yeah. I've heard that. I've heard that that uh, Chris Christie is now above him. No. 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 Hmm. Find me the poll. I mean, this was a CNN poll, and this is the only one that's been taken recently, and it had um, uh, it had DeSantis in the last round at twenty two percent. 
And in okay. this round, he's at 22 percent. Oh. Where Trump was at 53 percent, he now he's down to he's down at 47 percent. Um. So. Yeah, I don't know where you got that. Fox News. Fo no, Fox News wouldn't do that. They, you know. Yeah, that, like the interview was Fox News. That when I said, yeah, he said there weren't documents in there. There are a bunch of news articles and mag magazine clippings. And clothes. <laughs> yeah, like he reads. Now, and this is from a day ago. So it's like now he's now he's back to the whole story of there weren't documents there. It's like, ugh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what the hell? You know, it. It. I. 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 I keep saying to myself, you know, that I just can't take any of this seriously anymore. There's, there's nothing serious to take. This is just uh, terrible. And we're we're back to this. You know, I would love to live my life or last years of my life going at least a few days without anybody mentioning Trump's name. Former President Trump is addressing a key piece of oh. What's that? Well, what do you know? How many here wish Trump were on the Titan? <laughs> okay. I mean, you know what it is, I think, with him? It's almost like oh. he... He's a cult of personality, like. But I think people are fading away from him because he's got a base of whatever you want to say. But it's definitely shrinking. He's, he's got, got a thirty-three percent base. Okay. I mean, he's seventy-seven. In two years, he'll be seventy-nine. I mean, I'm not trying to be an well, age, he can but be, it, he can he can get thirty-three percent of the vote. But nobody's ever been elected president with thirty-three percent of the I vote. Mean, and you don't even know how he's gonna. I, I just don't. I don't even think he's relevant anymore. I think they give him too much press. Really, Wouldn't other than, you feel sorry for Trump being on the Titan. All those other four people having to deal with that ass. I was going to say, yeah, they would have been like, "Hey, how did he get in here?" Jesus, what a horrible ride that would be. I want my money back. Yeah. He's probably yeah. playing shits his pants all the time. <laughs> yeah, he'd be like, "Bring your boats." Yeah, but I mean, it's it was. It was uh, it, 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 it's. Uh, you know, it's horrible. I just, I'm tired of it. I'm just exhausted. Because he's so played out now. It's like you don't want to hear about him anymore. Yeah. 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 All right. Let's talk about something else then. What else is there to talk about? Hmm. We got, we took care of the Titan. Titan, yeah. We, uh, took, we took care of the, uh, of Trump. That's a, lot, that's a lot of money just to go down and see. You know, I was going to ask you this. When they make, is it just like, I know at, when they make this much money, do they lose sense of reality of what they want to spend now at that point? Like, yeah, yeah I'll go under the water. For, for well, listen, if you got, if you got, I mean, this guy, Reese, who worked on The Simpsons, I think maybe worth uh, a lot of money. Really a lot of money. Somebody's a billionaire. A couple much, of though. billion, what? yeah, at least. A couple yeah. of billion. And when you've got that kind of what we call fuck you money, you wait. That's what you. That's what you do with it. You know, if I had that kind of money, that's what I'd do with it. Only I, I make sure the thing was safe before I went yeah, down on it. You go all the way under, under the water. I, mean, yeah. I don't know if I would do that. Here's the part that really is incredible. The guy yeah. who owns the company is in on there. Is the pilot? Yeah. He's the well, pilot. He? Yeah, he's uh, committed. It's the CEO. Maybe his wife uh, served him with uh, papers in a text message. He decided to commit suicide. Yeah, that's right. right. Goodbye. <laughs> Where are we go? Where are we going back up? Yeah, one of the guys happens to be a billionaire, and his son. And his son, right? Uh, They're Greek, I think. Or... All, all on Gilligan's Island. Uh, and uh, let me see here. Who else? Uh, then there's uh, there's another. There's, oh, there's a, uh, a a big sea guy. You know, the guy goes down and all... Uh, like, like Jacques Cousteau. Like Jacques Cousteau, yeah. that kind of... Yeah. Like, he was on that. So, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's, it's something. I mean, I you know, on top of that, are you ready for this? The only way you can get out of that thing is they yeah. have to open from it outside. from the outside. Bolt it, yeah. Yeah. Well, Bolt you know, when you, if they're in the depths that they say they are, you don't want to open the hatch. Not from the inside, no. <laughs> nope, not from the inside, not from the outside, because the pressure would kill them. So, 
And we can't we can't even put a diver in the water that deep, so you got to bring it up. Yeah, and, and now it, it, it. they've only gotten about another oh, about another twelve hours. Know, twelve hours of uh, yeah, air left. It, it, if if they actually know, apparently they haven't actually put somebody in this thing above ground uh, for four days and tested to see if it's really ninety six hours. Can you imagine the boat? This company is going to go bankrupt. Oh, oh they're bankrupt already. Forget it. Yeah. No, nobody's going to trust They're an American this company. company. Are they really? Chinese would be working. Yeah, they're well, American company. All I got to do is get like a, you know, um, um, what are those things you you put under your lawn and that's where all the crap goes? Uh, uh, septic tank. Septic tank. All you got to do oh. is get a septic tank. Fill it full of oxygen and say, "Hey, two hundred fifty thousand dollars a piece," and dump the thing in the ocean, and people will do it. Nobody was questioning them. Nobody was questioning whether this was. The Coast Guard safe. wanted to inspect it last year, and they were turned down. Yeah, really? because it, from what uh, everybody who knows that craft intimately, yes, says it's a piece of crap. Experts you know. around the world. Yeah. Yep. Yes. What a shame. Yes, Jeff. My my uncle developed a lot of this uh, sonar buoy, which is one of the ways. Get closer to, to your microphone, will you? Okay. My uncle was a guy who developed all these sonar buoys, mm -hmm. which is the way that the submarines can figure out where they are. Yeah, yeah. Triangulate, right? Yeah. And um, they're not doing very good luck with it. Yeah. And and it would have been a simple thing with them. Well, the thing simple. is, even right. if they found it right now, I don't know yeah. if they could get it up in time. Right. You know. Apparently, something went wrong. <laughs> yeah. No shit. Oh, yeah. I'm, <laughs> that's the stupidest statement I've made in years. <laughs> Something went wrong. That's all right. CNN's been doing it for two days. Yeah. Something went wrong. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it probably could have been something as simple as it getting snared in some stuff down there yeah. and, and being stuck. They don't even know how deep the thing is right now. It could be 100 feet deep and floating out. They, they don't know. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 logically, all they have to do is dump these weights and they go straight up. Something. So it could have gotten to the bottom, and who knows how deep the silt is down there, and it could have gotten buried. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean, there are any number of things, but, I mean, it certainly is something, I think, it, I, I would I would almost say maybe they're dead already. Yeah, I think you're yeah. right. Yeah, they... Yeah. It's, awfully, at... it's awfully cold down there, too. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And what yeah, do they, they get to keep them warm? Breathe carbon dioxide. Pretty and by soon. the way, I hope you don't yeah. get leg cramps because there's no way to stand up and get rid of them. Mm -hmm. right. You got to stay cross legged out. You got to sit cross legged for ten hours. It said yeah. only one person could have their legs extended at a time. Oh yeah. my god! I've been. So they just watch it. Yeah, that's what I heard too. Swap out. Yeah. I, I, I'm sorry. Well, I, to begin with, I have claustrophobia, so you're not getting well, me in there. I could, <laughs> yeah. you know, I'm, I'm claustrophobic. I would have. I would have sent Trump money if he would have gone down. And, isn't it? They do have a toilet, which the is one toilet, Alex. which they say yeah, has never, which they say has never been used. Oh, oh. the jar. <laughs> a jar. Hold that that's steady. I, that's they said Hold on, that on, steady. On, really? It's, 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 it's a freaking jar. <laughs> I, I hear they have a, a dog water purification. Oh, thank God. Thank God this thing is high tech. Yeah. 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 Coffee Literally, it's like, a jar. Of coffee. <laughs> coffee. Yeah, really. Can you make me another cup of coffee? Oh, yeah. I'm ready to come yeah. coffee. That's amazing. Alex, to control, do you well, see the Because they typically go down there for about six hours and they're back right. up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The yeah. controller That's for the pie. a Coke bottle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, you know, Tony, you could have sent him down with some of your fresh-made coffee in a thermos. That would have kept him alive, probably. Listen to this. The pilot uses a video game controller to steer the craft. It looks yes. like a controller. No, no, but, but, but you, 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 I feel like I'm you, not getting it. Do you play video games, Tony? I play the GameCube, and I have an old PlayStation. GameCube? <laughs> Who makes GameCubes anymore? No, I mean, I have the uh, I have the Switch, the Nintendo Switch. 
I still have all my Nintendo systems. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, transvestites, uh, transsexuals like to use a Nintendo Switch. Anyway, that's a great system. I'm telling you. Yeah. Uh, That's the joke totally, Tony. No, I but didn't. as you and I both know, I, gotta, I mean, <laughs> I've used, what do you call it? Uh, I've used, uh, uh, I play games a lot. And I got to tell you, those are very accurate. Those are very <laughs> accurate. And also they're made to last too, because people are just going, blah, 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 blah. so I would trust that kind of joystick. It doesn't mean it's not capable of, you know, Maybe a pro. Who knows? We don't know. I would like. I would love Ooh. to hear uh, James Cameron's opinion because he has yeah. his own craft that he goes down in yeah. all the time. That supposedly is very safe. Not yeah. that deep, though. Yeah. No, he goes down feet. to the Titanic. Does he? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. I thought he did for the film. Did he? Also, no. Was that his footage? Yeah, he does a lot of shooting down there and so on, and he I just remember show the bow of the Titanic. I remember watching. How come the movie. they don't get him out there to dive with his little vessel? No, because he I isn't taking mean, people on joy movie. rides. You know? yeah. Hey, Adrian, how you doing, kiddo? Good. Hi, Adrian. <laughs> Did you get food I'm... on Saturday, Kevin? Mm -hmm. yeah, What'd you have? Kevin. We saw Kevin on Saturday, but I didn't send you a picture of Kevin and I and then send that to you, Alex. No. Yeah. Well, <laughs> if if Phil were there with you, I'd have a picture of it. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You know. We decided not to take a picture. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Did Uncle Kevin bring you some candy or anything good? He's supposed to be Ariana Grande. Oh. <laughs> Because they had dance class today, and they have spirit week, so they had to dress up like somebody or something that starts with the first initial of their name. So she's A, so she was Ariana Grande. Ariana Grande. Oh, very good. Everybody know that. Very good. Very All good. All right. Okay. Hi. Well, well, couldn't she just go as Alex Bennett? Yes! <laughs> oh, okay. Because Alex Bennett could have shaved your head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, your head. That chased her out of the room. Oh wait, I spoke too soon. Anyway, was it her birthday? Was it her hmm? birthday, or was it just? No, 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 no. It's a uh, dance. Her dance had Spirit Week. But I mean, when you had the uh, lunch with or dinner, or whatever with. Oh the... no, no, no! Uh, car show. Car show. Oh, okay. I had a car show on Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. Down at Gilroy, they had a bunch of stuff going on, so we sort of hit it. You Peter and I, like three cars. You shows. really love those cars, don't you? Yes. See, I can yes. never get hot behind cars. I don't know why. I think probably because um, there's no way I can have sex with them. There's no way I can. Yeah, them. They had them. They had them very easy. <laughs> there's no way I can eat them. You know, I mean, really, they serve no real purpose, so I, I have no use for it. But you can get eaten in them. That's true, <laughs> and I have been. Uh -huh. And think of the collection of door handles you'd have. Excuse me, I'm trying to keep from sneezing. What? The door handles? Yeah, didn't you break off one in Shecky's car? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, just think of the collection the, of door the handles. The car was 25 years old. Mm -hmm. Somebody car, was going to break that handle eventually. My car is 89 years old. What? Yeah, Brian's got yeah. Yeah, my 1934 Cadillac. Oh, a Older 1934 than Cadillac. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're 1939. This is this is five years before you. Yeah. Why do you? Is it still yeah. running? <laughs> yeah, it's still running. But it's new. I changed everything in it. So. That's an expensive proposition, my friend. Mine is 70. Everybody's got to have a hobby. Yours is 70 years old? Yeah, but it's still being built. Yeah. Oh, I see. You're still putting it together? You know what you can do with those cars. I mean, if you got a car like that, movie companies. Yeah. yeah. You can rent yeah. it out. Movie if you're in LA, it's a lot easier. My gold Cadillac was on like a root beer bottle before, a bunch of magazines, but calendars. But then I actually had a '73 Levi's. Cutlass that was going to be in that Will Smith movie. The the hell movie was that? Hmm. The one in San Francisco. Hmm. 
but I ended up selling it before they did the movie. Uh, yeah, they called yeah. me and wanted to be in it. Because it was just I, a regular old cutler. Yeah, I see movies today where they, you know, they got to pop, you know, they take place in the 20s and they've got to have that many cars working. Yeah. I'm sure they keep running yeah. them around the block over and over again, you know, so they look like more cars than they are. But, you know, having a car and being able to rent it out to movie companies, I imagine you could make a good little buck, you know. So. Yeah, I don't think they were going to pay that much. It was only like four or five hundred bucks, and they were going to run it, you know, park it on the street and run it up and down the road a couple of times. It wasn't that much, really. Yeah, but five hundred like, still, but you it, know, if you, yeah. if you do that a couple of times a year because somebody's making a movie or yeah. needs it for a calendar or something like that, you know, it, it takes care of the overhead on the car. Yeah, and you ain't doing nothing with it. You're just letting them use it. Yeah. I've been thinking about renting myself out. Uh, I, I get these casting notices. You gigolo you? Yeah, and I just don't know why I don't do it. You know, I guess because I just don't want to have to sit there for eight hours doing nothing, you know, being an extra, being what they call yeah, atmosphere. Just walking down the street. Yeah, so I I, I, I haven't done this. I, and on top of that, they don't let you eat their their, uh, their craft services. Really? Uh, uh, uh. Oh, uh, they treat you went to the wrong company. When I when I got my van, it, it's customized and it's basically a big bedroom in the back and uh, and drapes. Uh, a friend of mine saw it that uh, produced uh, X-rated movies, and he said he talked about it to the guy that owned the company, and they used it in a in a porn. I got to I drive it down the road, and they see it, and then it goes into a warehouse. And these girls and guys that are having sex in the back before I even got to have sex, it was so new. So, hmm. Hmm. So well, uh, they paid me like I don't know seven, eight hundred dollars, but it, it it was good material. I get to watch it live. Yeah. Yeah. Well, done. you know, I I I um, I've thought about doing this twelve but years then, ago. Then I just don't know if I. I it's, it's, it, I I'm too old to. Sp and sometimes the shoots are like at three in the morning. Yeah. Like, oh no, no 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 no. Leave me alone. Okay. No. But you know, I got I I saw the notices for Succession. Um, uh, what was the other show? The big other big show that I saw that I could have done. Was Marcy's Smart Girls. What is that one called? I don't know, but there's one that uh, that uh, uh, oh the blacklist. You know? Oh, I like this one. Yeah. And I saw the notices on that, and they just need, they need somebody my age, people of all ages, you know, just to walk down the street and back us. Why somebody don't you do or whatever. it? Because yeah. it's it's Told to begin you. with, it only get pays two hundred dollars for oh, eight, sure. eight hours, like an extra. Then it is, yeah, that's exactly what. Oh, it so is. you're not named in the movie at all? Oh no, no, I would not get oh, well, credit. Screw that, no. I mean, if you're going to get Alex Bennett, you got to put his name in there. That's the right. You got to put my name in there. Yes, Jeff. Quickly, I got to yeah. play the. Th I'm playing the theme here now. That movie was pursued. I'm mute, so I'll talk. San Francisco Giants going for ten in a row, baby. These guys are quite well. Wait a minute. Last time was 2004. Wait a minute. Let Jeff, Jeff say what he's got to say. Jeff. He's on mute. He's on mute. This is dead time. Oh, okay. Well, if he's on Go mute. Giant. <laughs> Go, Go Giants. Go Giants. Anyway, there you go. My go grandfather yeah. used to have a dog. He would be in all kinds of movies. So, you know, be walking around with a dog. That was his job. Mm -hmm. his okay. Time. Anyway, thank you, Jeff. Thank you to Definitely. Scott Boddicker. God, it's good to see you here in that black void of yours. And uh, um, uh, Kevin, always a pleasure, my friend. Uh, and Alan, nice to see you there tonight and hear all the funny jokes that you've told tonight. Yeah. That's hysterical. And we'll, yeah. we'll look forward to diagramming some more of them next time you're on. Uh, thank you very much to Charlie Wallace, who I thought would be out doing baseball tonight if it wasn't that warm, but it was too hot for quite a few days to play, right? Uh, no, no, they don't cancel the game. Really? We're playing 118 degrees of uh, heat index. Then you're bigger idiots than I thought you were. Uh, wow. And also thanks to uh, Brian Neary and thanks to Tony. Thanks to all of you. Give a big wave of goodbye and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you as well. Okay, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. 
That's our citizen panel for tonight. Jack Bishop is next with The Intersection. He'll be taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. I'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.